Good day, my name is Andre Willefier. Um, I'm a chaplain with the Dogs of War Motorcycle Association and we have a lot of buddy projects where we uh, reach out to, to fellow veterans in need where we can help and also to the community at large. And one of the things that we try to do with the Dogs of War is to send out these type of messages. So thank you for your time. Thank you, thank you for allowing me in there wherever you may be, your house, your car. Uh, I just want to share a short message uh, with you. The title of the message is The Lost Book. Now you won't believe what I'm going to say, but the Bible, well that portion of it that was available in, 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 in the Old Testament times, got lost. Can you believe that? Let me read for you from uh, 2 Kings 22 and verse 8. Um, and it says, that during the, the reign of King Joshua, a great discovery was made. Halkia, the priest, announced to Shapan, the scribe, during the time that the temple was being repaired, I found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. 2 Kings, verse 20, chapter 22 and verse 8. Can you believe that? That, the, that they found the book, the Bible, basically at that point in time, the five books of the Old Testament. From that state, uh, from that statement, a very interesting started uh, to transpire, and that the book that was lost brought revival. The king, at that point in time, he tore his clothes. He repented because the Bible was lost because the people did not know the content of the the the. Yes, the content of the Bible, they just carried on in their own ways. And then what he did was he, he, he spoke to the people and they fasted and they prayed and God revealed himself to them. If you go and look in 2 Kings 23 uh, verse 1 and 2, God spoke to their hearts as he did to the king's heart. They were convicted of forgotten vows and they renewed the covenant of the nation to the Lord. Revolver came in response to finding the book. Now let me ask you, and it will remain a secret between me and you, how many Bibles do you have in your house? Where are they? Have you read them? Do you know what the contents of that book is, the 66 books in the Bible? Do you know that Jesus overcome Satan when he was tempted with just three scriptures. The word says in James, resist the devil and he has to flee. Not if he wants to flee, if he considers to flee, he has to flee. But you have to know what is written in the word. Jesus just said it is written. He did not quote a book, a chapter or whatever. When it is written, it is written. It is God's word. And if you use that word, the enemy will and has to listen to that word. All of the weapons that you have, spiritually speaking, are defensive. The helmet, the breastplate, the belt, the sandals and so on. Only the sword, which is the word of God, is a Christian's offensive weapon. A weapon with which you can attack. But how do you attack if you don't know what is in the word? If you buy a new firearm um, and you don't know how to use it, it really means nothing. Do you know that even the heathens, even the heathens study the Bible to debate people like me and you? And some of them know the Bible better than us Christians do. It's also a fact that Satan himself knows the word. So, where is your Bible? When last have you spent some time? And please listen to me. I don't want this to be heavy. I don't have the authority to, to come and to make you feel bad. But I want you to examine yourself with that free will, that precious gift of a free will that the Lord Jesus Christ gave you and gave me. To say, have our backs forgotten to read the word? Don't they make time to read the word? And I ask that the Holy Spirit will just talk to you 
And maybe you get quiet and go and pray. And just, some of us, take that Bible, dust it off a little bit, and start reading. I'm reminded of a, a ministry outreach down in, in Durban many years ago, where you had all of these um, uh, trams sleeping in the park, and uh, an evangelist came there, and he started to, to share the message. And he did this uh, on several occasions. And one of the, the tramps there said, look, I'm not interested, but I see the Bible that you have uh, has got nice thin and fine pages. Um, give me the Bible because I want to make zoles out of the, the pages of the Bible. And uh, the preacher said, no, fine but on one condition that you read the page before you tear it out of the Bible and make us all. And they had that agreement, sort of a gentleman's agreement. The pastor was prepared to, or the evangelist was prepared to, to accept his word. And he gave him the Bible and off he went. A couple of years later, he came to the same spot um, as an evangelist spoke to the tramps that were there and he was approached by a man dressed in a suit obviously very well off and he approached the evangelist and spoke to him and said do you recognize me do you remember me and the evangelist said no i'm sorry unfortunately not he said i was the tramp that you gave the bible to and i did my upheld my side of the bargain and every time I wanted to uh, turn us all, I read the page first, and then I made the all. He said, I smoked through Matthew, I smoked through Mark, and when I got to John in the Bible, it smoked me. He gave his heart to the Lord. He's a big businessman, and he supports the ministry right now. The word is beautiful, and it can only mean something to you if it costs you something. Something that doesn't cost you something, doesn't cost you time uh, or energy or, or things like that. It won't mean much to you. So I want to encourage you. Find the Bible, find a translation and start to study it. And ask that the Holy Spirit would illuminate certain things to you. Not that you're just reading or listening to what other people have said. What is the Holy Spirit conveying to you? What is he breaking open in the word? To you and just a little bit of maybe friendly advice if you will allow me if you do have a couple of spare bibles lying around why don't you go out and go and give it to a tramp ask him to to read the pages before he uses it for whatever he wants to use and maybe you will also experience a miracle please allow me to pray father god we just adore you and we love you lord and we thank you for your precious word, Lord. Lord, most of us, if not all of us, including me, Lord, we thought we were on the path, Lord, until we met you face to face, Lord. And here it was that come on, Thank you, Father God, for your precious word. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you, Father, for the death and the resurrection. Thank you that you are seated on the right hand of the Father, interceding for us on a daily basis. Lord, I pray your protection over us, Lord. Thank you for your, your mercy, your grace, your love, your provision, Lord, for our health, Lord. Bless every person listening to this, Lord. In your wonderful name I pray. Amen and amen. Stay blessed until we speak again.